uh, she uh, body shamed me saying like I don't deserve to have the gift uh, right in front of 3000 plus children at that school no one is going to do anything to anybody literally no it's just plain no so I don't know when people are going to understand this follow your instincts uh, make a mistake learn from it then you will become your own motivator like you don't need uh, someone like me to motivate you Hello beautiful people, welcome to Reach Your Podcast. We hear you and this is a platform for all budding women. This is Madhumati here with yet another beautiful and bold guest. Today we have Ramya J. Christina, who is a budding filmmaker and a model. She also runs an NGO for sexually abused children. Let's welcome her. Hello Ramya, glad to have you here. I, it's my pleasure, thank you very much. How are you Ramya? How are you doing? I am so good. I am so good. How do you do? I am good, thank you so much Ramya. So, uh, right. uh, question. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, I generally say this in every interview. Uh, like that is my favorite question to ask. Okay. I generally ask people. So it is very personal to me, and that is why I had to interrupt and say thanks to yeah, you. Sure. Uh, when we ask the question, how we you, we don't really expect the right answer or the actual answer, right? We only yeah. want them to tell us that we are okay, that yeah. they are doing good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it has become more like a you know a courtesy to ask, and it's again a courtesy. Yeah, okay, I'm absolutely. Good. Yeah, absolutely. So understanding the meaning of that question, you know, like I encourage people, like insist that people um, always uh, mean it when they ask how uh, someone is doing. Like you know, I want people to mean it. I get it. Did you mean it? Are you really doing good? Oh, yeah, of course I am. <laughs> Apart from the information in my eye, like I'm awesome as always. That's seriously nice to hear it from you. So, <laughs> shall we proceed? Yeah, please. Yeah. So, let's go in. Um, when I was researching about you and we, and we got to know about you, I found that you were into multiple things. Like, you make movies and you write a script and you run an NGO. You model, so many things are there. So let's start with, uh, with your passion. Okay? Let's start off with the uh, filming. How did it start? Since when are you interested or passionate, and uh, how did you get into this stream? I guess I've started um, this like uh, since my childhood. I mean, I'm 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 always creative. I've always been creative. Uh, like say, for example, uh, we watch a movie in a TV, right? And uh, I would always think like, okay, what if this role was played by another person? Uh, what if this character was uh, uh, designed, portrayed differently? Likewise, you know, like initially it was um, not filmmaking only. Like I wanted to become an animator. I wanted to get plays uh, for Walt Disney, uh, you know, do at least one project for them. I and uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So I used to... I used to uh, sketch anything I see in front of my eyes okay. so that became kind of an, a habit and uh, after I drew things you know I've started naming them uh, like I've started doing running pictures and later on I developed this uh, love for animation and that's when I watched uh, a movie um, at the first part of Ice Age I didn't even know there was something, uh, you know, like something that I already loved existed. I didn't okay. know it was there already. Okay. okay. So, yeah, I uh, that's when I've started, uh, you know, uh, back then internet was uh, not that much, you know, like we did not have, have access for internet. Right? Yeah. Not everybody at least. Um, so, I did not uh, either. So uh, I've started looking for stuff. So I've started asking people like, "What is this? And what? Where can I uh, get this? Like, where can I go and learn it and okay. stuff like that?" So it went on, 
and i got to know that there there's this place where uh, they teach animation but um my family couldn't afford the course back then uh, i was asked like for 3 and a half lakhs for yeah. one year course yeah. unfortunately my family could not afford it okay. so you know i was too young and like it didn't affect me that much at least not uh, okay. back then Mm-hmm. so being always creative you know like i thought okay what else can i do about it like what else can be done and i thought okay i had the idea about changing uh, you know like switching roles with others and i mean like every characters i watched right so i thought why not pen them why not write them and that's how it started that's how i became what i am i mean the filmmaker that i am and that's how i got chance to work with a uh, director actor mr parthi but i was his assistant for almost a year okay. um i worked for some three films uh, mm-hmm. when i was his assistant uh, those are yet to be released of course okay. um so yeah i just got to know a lot of people after uh, doing my visual communication okay. i like literally fought with my uh, family like i had to go through you know Two days. I had to starve myself for two days to uh, take Viscom as my uh, graduate. I mean, like I've I've graduated in that degree, which my mom did not appreciate, of course. Okay. Um, she didn't want me to take that as a career. Mm-hmm. Like uh, she wanted me to do something else, like to become a um, you know a talent, something like that. yeah, very much formal. That's what she wanted for me. and you know being a christian um uh, uh, mothers are always like that you can't help it they are like uh, they want you to grow up to a certain age and get married to another christian like mm-hmm. go settle in the church have children <laughs> thing hallelujah seriously that's i i always knew that's not what i meant to to okay. so i wanted to explore my creativity mm-hmm. so yeah i draw i i mean i still do a lot of things it's just um i i could just name direction and um a drawing um so uh, other than that i don't even know what that is yeah yeah exactly i can't <laughs> explain actually yeah <laughs> so that's the thing and you know i so that's how it started that's the beginning i yeah that's yeah. it it happens you know like uh, mostly family like especially mom and dad they want you to be in something very you know secure and like you have this job security you don't have to hustle just get just get your degree done and go for a job and earn and all these things with your parents but things are changing and eventually you did what you wanted to do and uh, we hope you achieve what you want to achieve uh-huh. thank you <laughs> <laughs> so okay this was about how you entered uh, you know the direction and this this time so what was it Uh, to enter modeling how did you enter modeling what uh, how did you land it okay that's uh, that's something interesting i would love to share every yeah. time so i had this friend okay uh, before that um, i have a skin condition um, called vitiligo um it is like uh, i have visible patches all over my body um so i have been bullied and like i have been treated very and uh, for this um i thought okay why not change it to you know like if people are going to treat me like a vegetable like if people are going to look at this as a negativity i wanted to convert it uh, as my positivity i have always seen myself unique you know only uh, for having this difference yeah. uh let's just say uh, everybody else are unique but they have to you know exhibit their talent to get noticed yeah. right i don't have to do anything i just have to go stand there and you know yeah <laughs> i'm already famous <laughs> that is so, so that's the thing of you ramya seriously <laughs> i know right <laughs> that is really for so yeah <laughs> thank you so yeah that's up and this friend of mine who's a photographer um suggested that i take modeling as a career and i initially i modeled i mean um she was the first to take pictures of me and it worked really well uh, i got appreciated a lot for those pictures and she was able to build a um, you know a proper portfolio for herself okay if she could why can't i right 
so yeah that's how it started and since i've started uh, sharing my pictures on social media uh, i've got chances like i've got people approaching me to model for their brands and you know like stuff like that so that's how modeling started yeah uh, we see right like initially this beauty industry played the cosmetics or this they were like very niche only for these kind of people and it was very hard for others to get it but now people are you know thinking beyond uh, the stereotypes and there are so many people from various kinds you know from various walks of life achieving things we can't we think we can't are what people are doing and uh, that is great that you took this initiative and it seriously made uh, a difference uh, so when you started off uh, maybe in uh, film i mean film making or in modeling and you also told that you were uh, even bullied and uh, things would have been very tough so how how did you you know handle them how did you face them how did you overcome them kind of? most interesting question actually you know like this most is what everybody asks important question me. actually yep yeah, right so you know at least one soul gets help uh when i speak right mm-hmm. that is why it is most favorite question of uh like me i mean for me yeah. so yeah hardships of course there were a lot um this started with like go started since um uh, the age of 5 okay mm-hmm. so even before that um actually my mom and dad are uh, they are close blood related okay when they got married they did not know about it okay so I was the first child obviously you know right like there's this um thing called like you uh, I mean okay I forgot it I forgot the name I mean uh, there's a term I forgot it okay so mom mom and dad uh, like they weren't supposed to be married for medical reasons but they did okay so um so I had to um you know go through difficulties I mean the result of their marriage yeah. so yeah um the so, um generally people would uh, you know like for marriages like this um the children uh, the first born children would suffer differently but in my case it was um like i could not eat properly uh, even as a baby like as a, a little baby you know i could not have any proper solid food particularly non vegetarian uh, even uh, consuming an egg gave me like itches in my skin like uh, i used to grow some boils all over uh, the body like uh, it have uh, like it uh, it started hurting um and that's what i i mean um that's when they wanted to take me to in you know, a hospital to see what uh, the reason is but the doctor could not find uh, the reason so he just you know gave me some random medicine and the medicine was uh, overdose for my age back then so that aggravated to these patches okay. um to be exact it is melanin deficiency that's what you call it um so i had this deficiency since then and uh, i've started growing patches uh, right around like 5 age 5 but before that my hair used to uh, be like too uh, gold uh, you know like it it would appear like golden brown uh that's what i was uh, told like i i i've always um seen like an anglo indian baby something like that oh. okay you know like that yeah. so yeah um and since then uh that's that's when i've started my school um so yeah it's obvious pa- uh, parents of my friends you know like the children in the school uh their parents didn't want their children to make friends with me they did not want me to befriend anybody and the teachers they weren't appreciative as well uh nobody could understand it back then um that's because there wasn't much awareness not like these days um uh, so they just uh, assume that it is kind of leprous you know uh, it is that i am contagious so i i didn't have much explanation to give to anybody because i myself was a toddler i mean like i yeah, could not do yeah. anything about it so i had to go through all of this um until i finish uh, school um uh, like what do you say school is something very important for oh everybody right like school is where you learn a lot of things that's why it is school right so i did not have that uh privilege to learn stuff at school because i had to go through this every single day 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, until 12th standard, this is how it was. Uh, no matter what I did, um, one of the headmistress didn't want to give me the gift that I won, you know, after a competition. Uh, she uh, body shamed me saying like, I don't deserve to have the gift uh, right in front of 3000 plus children at that school. And one of the teachers didn't want to uh, get water, a cup of water from my uh, hands. Like, you know, she yelled at uh, me saying that it is not, I mean, like it is a sin to even get water from my hands. So uh, this I regularly tell in every interview because I want people to learn, uh, you know, how not to treat people, how not to treat uh, people who are different like um, since you know uh, it is completely different after I've understood that I possess something unique but before that it was quite a struggle I can't even explain it you know I don't have much words to explain it seriously um, like when you take a public transport um, uh, there will be women who, uh, who will not want to sit next to you right so that's the kind of uh, insult and you know I was always considered like an abomination and you know, something like that. The worst case, you know, uh, people didn't appreciate having me around. Not family, not friends, nobody, literally nobody. So, um, I, it took me some time to understand. But after 12th standard, you know, like, like I said, I'm a creative person, you know, after uh, completing my 12th standard, I thought, okay, why not change myself? If people are going to treat me like this, you know, like I want to prove them wrong. I wanted to present myself different. Um, like, you know, I wanted to present myself better so that people, uh, uh, you know, would look at me differently. It is important for me to, uh, you know, get recognized because I want to be uh, in this industry like I've decided that this is what I'm going to do in the future for which I need people to look at me I need people to yeah exactly so that's what I wanted right so I thought why not present myself different I thought why not change things about me so right from my mannerism you know like every little detail every little single detail about me I had to work on them I've changed everything uh, about me, the way I dress, the way I speak, and the looks, and my hair, and everything. So after that, I had a really good fight with my mom to join Viscom. You know, <laughs> from then it was a roller coaster ride. <laughs> yeah, but Ramya, yeah. trust me, you are a fighter. I mean, yeah, every most of the uh, people, most of the uh, children, especially in the teens and. Uh, a pre and post teens children suffer. I mean, go through all this bullying and all this. Thing. But right from school, right from teachers, family, everything. And after all that, being such a positive person is, I don't know, what do you call that? So, uh, you. You just call it life. That's all. You know, yeah. you always have to face things, right? Confront your demons, right? So, this is my, uh, this was my demon. And ever since I've started confronting it, you know, like, yeah, it's just fun always. What kept you oh, going? That's the thing about um, us uh, Indians. Uh, that's what our parents do to us. You know, they just have a picture of us, uh, you know, like our future in their hands. Like they want us to become something that we do not want, but they want. They want us to look a certain way, behave a certain way, you know, like a certain thing. Um, but it's just not easy for them to understand. Likewise, it is not easy for us to just take it up, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. So that that is exactly why I didn't want it to be the way they wanted me to, because they never appreciated me. Maybe if they had, you know, like appreciated me in um like. For even a little thing, like even for a smallest thing I've done, uh, maybe I don't know. I could have been there, uh, you know, the little princess that they wanted. But uh, gladly, I did not end up uh, being that. I, I, my father was like ashamed of me, literally ashamed of me. Um, he's he actually has another family, okay. so he just left us after my younger sister was born. Uh, he, I guess he wanted, uh, you know, a boy child. He did not want girl children. 
um you know being both i mean uh, we both being girls he did not want to stick around i think or uh, that's what i was told uh, maybe that is right i don't know uh, he just left us hanging uh, like me and my mom and my sister so it was quite a struggle for my mom as well mom did not understand my needs for uh, you know her love and uh, i wanted friends and i wanted to uh, relate myself to something you know but yeah. i could not find anything to relate right so mom did not understand that struggle i've been going through because um, she's not very much educated um she's from like you know yeah my family is like that like every other indian family they you know one from uh you know long long ago so long ago stories and all they're right yeah. like that she's also one bichari pa <laughs> you know uh very innocent character you know very very innocent uh, woman you cannot blame her for anything literally she did not understand that's not her fault right so and yeah the society also is like that you know like most of the time even to this day uh, live on those days like even to this day we tend to judge people by our definitions we don't understand their definitions and oh, so tell me the horror please oh my god yeah. society the one thing i hate when people say what would society think of you what would society do to you come on shuck it seriously i have to uh, you know like i have to work my ass off if i yeah. want my uh, plate full right so no one is going to do anything to anybody literally no it's just plain no so i don't know when people are going to understand this i i i mean come on we have a lot of good people around we do see a lot of people help others but they you know it just applies for certain scenarios not every yeah. time or not everywhere right like it's not like that right so i wanted to tell this to my family when my family did not understand you know i just okay well and good um you gave birth to me fine thank you i have a life of my own i'm going to live it just don't yeah. interrupt don't ever stop me from doing anything that i wanted and i took up model modeling you know as a career and filmmaking uh, is my passion so yeah vagera vagera <laughs> so uh, ramya like i'm sure you have enough experience to go tell people to you know to bring in positivity and motivate them to be a better person and you are doing that you are going to schools and colleges and talking to like a huge number of people and addressing students uh so what do you talk to them about and how do how is the response um uh, uh, probably by now you must have understood that i don't know much to talk seriously i just talk what i talk that's that all that is uh, necessary you talk to from yourself <laughs> yeah absolutely that's exactly what i tell people children or adults it doesn't matter i that's exactly what i tell them you know follow your instincts Uh, make a mistake learn from it then you will become your own motiv- motivator like you don't need uh, someone like me to motivate you you just need yourself to become better you know like to understand better that's what i tell people mainly first thing secondly i don't want them to you know like follow the stereotypes um um i i just don't like the idea of being something that everybody are just uh, just because a hundred people are doing something doesn't make it right or doesn't make it uh, you know uh, the right thing or the necessary thing right so that's what i tell children you know uh, to see things differently to have a, dis- a different perspective about everything every little thing so that's what i tell them you know and of course my journey uh, with with lego and um, everything else about me so that's what i tell them So how do they uh, respond to it? How has the children uh, res- uh, reciprocated? How do they respond? Okay, I have a story to share for this question. Yeah. Okay. So there was this time where I uh, had to go get a book. I mean, like buy something for uh, you know to read or something like that. So I was depressed myself. I went to a shop looking for a book. I couldn't find it. But the shopkeeper this. 
uh, the woman uh, kept staring at me you know like she wanted to talk to me i understood that much but she was hesitant to do so you know so i went to her myself i asked her like if she wanted to talk to me like if there's anything she wanted to share or ask so uh, she, i don't know i mean like she just started crying i was like okay come on calm down why what happened and she started telling me about her um Um, uh, you know a relative boy from her family who has the same complaint as mine uh she said that uh, i mean she said that i i wouldn't call it complaint okay so <laughs> i i insist that it is uh, you know okay. not to call this one a complaint complaint yeah so yeah i so i uh, i heard her speak and i i listened to her i i like listening to people so i did that and after she finished you know like i uh, asked her to take a picture of mine and uh, i asked her to tell to the boy that i am a filmmaker and if i could do things uh, if i could be better if i could make it up to this you know um uh, this field uh, uh, a filmmaking field you know how, what yeah. i mean of course so uh, he could definitely do much more much bigger than that right so that's what i told her i asked her to tell this to uh, the boy and show my picture and i also told her that if he's not convinced yet ask uh, ask him to call me and i shared my number so i got a call from a random boy after some okay. time okay. Uh, he called me up that's the guy uh, she was talking about he called me up and uh, we spoke like we had a very long conversation for more than an hour like hour or a couple i don't remember so after that very long conversation you know like i just hung up and almost forgot about it i mean like i just uh, went on with my life after a few months again the guy called me and said like akka uh, bless me i'm about to write my semester uh, thank you very much you know the problem was the boy never wanted to get out of the house only mm-hmm. because he had uh, visible patches he never mm-hmm. wanted to get out of his room at all so i wanted to tell him that no uh, it is not his doing it and it is not something wrong it is yeah. not something uh, right um, so mm-hmm. i told him all that i wanted him to get out of the house get a life seriously like to get an actual life you know go get educated <laughs> so oh, that's what i told him and i don't know something must have happened with this guy like i don't know <laughs> he just went to college and started um doing everything uh, in a casual way you know like took up education and everything else so his exam have started so he wanted me to bless him uh, like uh, wish him for his yeah. exams how was that how moment yeah, like you know after you you know that's the fruit you get from your all your efforts you know and that pain you take and you see somebody else also benefiting from it how was that moment uh you might think that ramya is super unique like ramya is special ramya is at this and that that's what the society sees right ramya is still a human and i always have uh not always but sometimes i also even i have uh my downs right when i feel down or when i want things to be different i obviously have some um uh, mood swings right so it's common uh, in people right so um at times like that uh, i would tell myself okay i had this particular moment where i could inspire somebody else why not do it myself yeah so I, in a way i helped myself by helping somebody else that's beautiful so that is something precious uh, for me you know like that is that's how i see it i did not help anybody i just um, made the guy understand the reality so uh, you know in a way it helped me that's all that's beautiful oh, thank you seriously i mean i don't know i just, you know just got uh, involved to involved in uh, let's talk about your uh, script that you're writing right now so when can we see that on screen and how's the process going how's the process yeah sure um um if not for this lockdown you know if not for this pandemic uh, i might have started uh, by the end of this year i need a lot of research to uh, to you know like out of uh, i mean to go out and uh, do ground research um so for which i need some uh time you know as uh, six months or uh, an year or so 
so i i i was planning to do that this year okay. and you know thanks to the covid 19 <laughs> that's the okay. problem thing happens to good hopefully yeah of course of course you know yeah that's right so probably next year i don't know okay we are hoping to get a production team for me uh, sorry i have to get a production team for me right yeah so yeah. that and the research and everything is going to take uh, at least a year mm-hmm. so after uh, one year i think uh, you might watch you know my movie on screen or in or, like any ott platform anywhere all the best for that okay thank you thank you very much yeah so you also um, do this uh, run this ngo right where you help people uh, sexually uh, yeah. abused children when you were telling about that uh, you also told um, that uh, you help both the victim and the abuser right so how was it i mean that is that just got my attention for a moment so what do you actually do and how do you help both of them that's a really good concept so i just want to know how okay uh, i'll explain it to you fine um i run in uh, you know a wing in every school i mean not every schools for as of now we have just a few schools but it is my big dream to take it up to all the schools like everywhere um i have a team working in every schools um um let's just say we have some um random people working uh those will be um, um how do okay a psychiatrist and a gyno or a pediatrician and a legal advisor a, a lawyer okay uh, basically a person a, a, a lawyer okay so all these three together we have a, a wing uh, that functions in schools where they speak to children you know only with my uh, knowledge like i only i will have the data um i would not share any details to anybody of whatsoever like whomsoever no sharing data at all so that's the thing uh that's that's how i do it um that is why it is success actually um so that the children op- i mean they open up um to us so with that we get to know the abuser and uh, you know like we confront them of course we ask them questions we try to see if the abuser uh, you know like uh, if they regret doing what they did um we will analyze you know like we will get to know them as well uh, like the victim you know we will get to know the abuser as well if the abuser is willing to take up uh, the changes you know like we will uh, provide counseling and um, stuff like that of course we have to um, you know give them the punishment that they deserve seriously for a crime such as uh, this you know being a pedophile is no excuse uh, i would i would definitely forgive anybody in my life even my father <laughs> but definitely not a pedophile <laughs> seriously um so that's the thing i i also think from the other end i also i tend to think from the opposite uh, uh, team you know that helps me a lot you know to uh, to uh, have a better understanding of why they did what they did like that and so with the wing you know uh, with these three people with these three officials uh, we just um try and convince people that it is okay to have a normal life after being abused like it is okay to have a normal life after uh, someone has abused someone so that's what i do i think everybody deserves a chance yeah. not pedo pet i'm like just human who are willing yeah. to take up chances <laughs> true i mean we all need to think because when we don't think of the other side is when the judgment is you know it's it's created right so that's right that to say right like age is just a number we number, say yeah. age is just a number think about it uh if a pedophile come and tell you that age is just a number i like that kid so i did what i did no that is not an excuse no that cannot be accepted in any way i don't see any sense in that statement right yeah. i don't see any 
so yeah i think okay even for the abuser uh, it is necessary that we make them understand uh, mm. the consequences as well as uh, you know the brutal thing that they've been doing they need to understand how so, yeah. of course they have to they must that's uh, thank you so much for all these things that you're doing uh, uh, would you like to what would you like to tell the you know audience and people who are looking for uh, inspiration or people who are you know who are not able to uh, tell things to people and who are affected by the judgment of society what would you like to tell them uh, what would i like to tell people is uh, always have your humanity no matter what just like how you uh, have a smile at your face like how you frown at things uh, just like how those are emotions considered emotions and the necessary ones um humanity you know having the um human side of yours uh, uh, like you know keeping it alive is very much pretty much important like how you breathe and eat every day you yeah. just have to stay human as long as you have a life um you know you don't have to stand example to someone you just have to look after yourself uh you know uh to not become a monster that we face every day uh, you know it's just not right for someone to judge us likewise it is not right for us to judge somebody else yeah. right yeah so we have to keep our human side alive no matter what we cannot kill it just like that only for the sake of you know uh getting a better place or getting a better uh pay no reason It's just yeah. you just have to be human that's beautiful Rana. yeah i mean Thank after you. so much of struggles uh, please don't take me wrong that i'm mentioning it i'm just so overwhelmed by the positive positivity that you hold in you and you the positivity you're trying to spread to people thank you so much for your uh, efforts and time and your sweetness thank you so much i i genuinely believe that <laughs> thank you thank you very much for having me seriously i had a really good time explaining things at least if it could you know like if it could help one soul uh, mission accomplished right oh, so yeah. thanks to you for doing this <laughs> thank you so much my pleasure yeah uh, to the audience thank you so much for your time and i'm sure this session would have inspired you enough and to hold humanity in you I hope you follow the uh, <laughs> you follow all these things and you understand the other person's perspective. And until then, this is Madhumiti signing off to reach her podcast. We hear you, and this is the platform for all bunny women out there. Thank you. Reach skyline. Embrace digital.